What are you covering up? What are the things that you try to hide that no one else sees? How do we live authentically without hiding things in our closet? There is nothing wrong with a little bit of cover up. We all do it in our own small ways. But it's funny how we think about all the things we cover up on the outside, but then there are things that are eating us up inside that are dangerous when we cover up. In today's video, we talk about the cost of covering up, the story of Neyman. Thank you very much for staying tuned and coming back to my channel. My name is Ikeo Dorobin and you're welcome to Inspirational Moment with AOOY. The best example for the cost of cover up in the Bible is the story about the man whose life depended on him covering up something very serious that was going to cost him his life, Naaman. He was a commander of the army of the king. He was highly regarded, a great man, and through him, the Lord gave Aaron victory. But he had leprosy. In his story, we find a great person that everyone thinks and wants to be like him, but then he had something that he was covering up, something that he didn't want anyone to know about, which was going to cost him his life because there was no cure for leprosy. Ask yourself, do you have something that you are covering up from? Sometimes it's easier to see someone else covering up. But the reality is that we all have something that we are covering up from. Sometimes it's the things that we don't want people to see. Sometimes it's so obvious like an addiction. And in other times it's so subtle like depression, like pain, like bitterness, like gossip. See? Some of you think that um, you are better off than others. You are better off than every other person. But the truth is that. We cannot cover up for a very long time because after a while it will start to spill over somewhere. This can affect your ability to have meaningful relationships or the ability for you to enjoy life and the blessings that you have with it. We have come to a realization where we get exhausted because we are covering up something. You need to get tired of acting like everything is okay with you, when in actual sense, it is not. Covering up takes a lot of work and it has a huge cost attached to it. It takes your time, your emotions, your money, your energy, your relationship, and it can even cost you your life. I urge all of us to change. You might be watching today's video and thinking that this message is for a friend, a brother, a sister, a colleague, and you would want to copy the link and share the link with that person. But wait, pause a minute. Think about yourself and what God is trying to tell you today. Because we all have one thing that we are covering up, that we need to change for. Just know that you are not alone in this race in covering up. Neymar wanted to show outwardly that he had everything going on for him well, but secretly he was dying inside because of something that he was covering. Neyman had to make a decision to stop covering up and seek out for change. You can hide a lot of things from a lot of people, but the hardest people to hide from are the people who are closest to you. So in Naaman's story, it was harder for him to hide his condition from his wife and his servant. One thing I want you to learn from the story is that change requires honesty. And honesty starts with yourself. To most people, I look all well. I manage grief perfectly. Some people see me as that strong woman that they want to be. But then... There are days when those closest to me know that I just want to call up in bed and not get out of it because I feel broken and I feel down. It's really hard to keep up with hiding what's going on within your heart. Neyman had to get honest with himself, with his wife and the king. If he stayed in the room and tried covering up the fact that he was, the fact was that he was going to die. 
he had to come to terms with reality and the severity of his situation. Honestly, start with ourselves, but then we've got to vocalize it to others. The enemy wants us to think that your problem is not that bad and that you can fix it all by yourself. The enemy wants you to think that you are the only one who has that particular problem that you are going through because as long as he can keep you in denial, as long as you continue to fake it, you will stay miserable and your condition will worsen. Change comes when we are honest with ourselves and also become honest with others. Naaman got to the stage where he was more afraid of what would happen to him if he wasn't honest to himself and to others. So sometimes we just have to get to that place where we realize that we need to speak to someone and be honest about what we are going through because we just can't go on like that anymore. Many of us have gotten to that stage where we are tired of covering up and that is where we need to get to in this life. Changing is not something that we do for God. Changing is something that God wants for us. But God does not want us to keep living in a hiding and shameful place and misery because that's not what he wants for us. He has something better for us. But it's going to take something on our part. Naaman was expecting the moment he went to Elisha. When he didn't get it, he got mad. But real change comes through simplicity and not drama as we expect in our lives. Naaman was angry because his expectations were not met as in how he planned it. If he stayed angry, then you never admit that you were part of the problem. Anger is a comforting way that allows us to shift blame and make excuses. But if there is anything comforting, it is the people that we have around us. So in his anger, Naaman began to make excuses. He says, I should wash here. I mean, how could I go and wash there when there were more cleaner waters in his hometown? Interesting. But then the one here was where his healing was going to come from. That is the deity water. It's not always about drama. It's not about all we see happening in other people's lives. But change comes in a simple way. Real change also requires vulnerability. Being vulnerable on social media is what the Bible is talking about. But like in Naaman's story, doing a small like seeking validation is when you do stuff on social media. It's not like you're seeking validation from people. But vulnerability takes courage. We need a trusted friend who has earned the right to hear our honesty. Not just anyone, but that one person who you can tell that I'm not doing okay. Will you kindly pray for me? And will you check up on me from time to time and ask me how I'm doing? And this is where change begins. The enemy wants us to think that being vulnerable will hurt your relationship. But that's not true. Vulnerability with a trusted person strengthens your relationship with them. How, your, how would your friend know that you need help when you keep everything covered up? Change is a process and it takes consistency. Naaman's expectation was instant change. It's funny how in our normal life we want quick change. We want things to change quickly for us. Like we want that pill that will make us slim fast. We don't want to go through the process of the journey. In your relationship with God, but it's going to take consistency on your part to see the actual change God wants you to experience inside out. What if you stop spending your fortune and time and money trying to make the outside look better, but actually spend some time working on change from inside? God wants us to change our behavior and our heart. In today's video, you ask yourself these questions. What is it that you want or you need to change? And what step do you need to take towards that change? Do you need to start by being honest with yourself or by being honest with God? Or by knowing and understanding that this is the reality of the situation and admitting to it that you need God right here because you've gone too far without Him. Thank you very much for watching today's video. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, click and like. 
as you and to have a blessed day.